Hello, welcome to our fourth video in the series of the DNA problem videos. This uh, video <clears throat> is called The Language of DNA 101. Uh, it's important to note that our videos build one on the other. We're taking simple concepts, defining simple terms, and proceeding. So uh, aside from all the multitude of information on the internet on this subject, if you have a specific um, doubt about some term we're using or why we're saying something in a given video, you might want to go back and review one of the earlier ones. Uh, in order for DNA to determine the structures of organisms, it must have a way to specify how an organism is to be built. It is correct to call this the language of DNA. On the left side, uh, you have there represented DNA. On the right side, a sample organism that it would make, and this is the DNA language that specifies how that organism is going to be built. The language of about 2% of DNA has been deciphered or under, completely understood or pretty much completely understood. It is now accepted that at least 80% of DNA has information in it. Uh, 30 different papers were published in September 2012. Uh, in this regards and so rather than talking uh, some people still backwards talking about a lot of junk DNA we were now know that at least 80% of the DNA has information in it but of that 2% has been deciphered and is understood in this 2% of DNA it is found that a sequence of three nucleotides called a codon specify an amino acid since there are four possible types of nucleotides Three nucleotides give us 64 possible combinations. And the math on that is real simple. Four times four times four equals 64 possible combinations. The following table shows which amino acid is specified by each codon or combination of three nucleotides. On the table, you can see on the left side, the left column, it says the first base across the top um, Across the top, we have a row that's actually column headers uh, and the, for the second base. And on the right side, we would pick up the third base again in rows. And so if we look at any combination of, and we have here a U instead of a T because this happens with RNA. And when we jump, when uh, DNA information is passed over to RNA, the Ts become U's. And again, you can document that elsewhere um, on the internet or in textbooks as you wish. So we have three nucleotides make a codon and uh, one codon uh, specifies or, or, or tells us which amino acid uh, that we're going to add. And the codon AUG we start off with and it's the signal to start the linking process. It contributes to the first amino acid methionine. Then each amino acid specified should be linked to the previous amino acid to make a chain of amino acids called polypeptide. There are only 20 different types of amino acids. As we saw, there are 64 possible combinations of nucleotides in a codon. So more than one codon can specify the same amino acid. And it, well, more than one. And uh, we actually have four codon or four nucleotide combinations that are used for what we could call punctuation. One for start and three for stop. So that leaves 60 nucleotide combinations or 60 codons to specify. And they each one specify some amino acids. So quite a few of them specify more than one, more than one way to specify the same amino acid. It's important to note this is not just a random list of amino acids. The sequence or order of these codons or nucleotides within the DNA chain that gets copied over to the RNA chain in the same order, that sequence uh, the, of the uh, codons or sets of nucleotides is part of the information as it specifies the order of amino acids in the chain. Three combinations of nucleotides and codons are used to stop building the polypeptide. So just putting this all together and we're talking about this, we're taking a large view of this. We're obviously not trying to teach you all the details of this. We just want to reach enough knowledge, common knowledge, common definitions that we can make some important points here. Proteins are built of one or more polypeptide chains. What implications do these discoveries have 
in regards to information in DNA. What can we learn and predict about information in DNA from these discoveries? First of all, we can see that there is nothing magical or miraculous occurring here. Ironically, I mention this not for the sake of creationist or the advocates of intelligent design. No, I mention this for the sake of theoretical evolutionist, who in their enthusiasm seem to miss the basis of materialistic science, which is every effect has to have a cause. To review and what do we mean by every effect has to have a cause, cells are built from proteins. Proteins are built from polypeptide chains. Polypeptide chains are built from specific sequences of amino acids. Specific sequences of amino acids must be specified by a specific sp sequence of codons or nucleotides. To emphasize this, let me quote from, an onli from online notes of a biology course, and the link's there in gray, but it's biology.clc.uc. Point edu. You can look at it there. And it gives us this example. Sickle cell anemia is caused by a change in only one nucleotide in the DNA sequence. That causes just one amino acid in one of the hemoglobin polypeptide molecules to be different. Because of this, the whole red blood cell ends up being deformed and, and unable to carry oxygen properly. So that's one of the conclusions, is that um, nothing magical is happening there. A second conclusion, we can also conclude from this, 2% of the DNA language, that when more complex structures need to be specified, then much longer sequences of nucleotides will be required to specify these complex structures. For example, how many nucleotides are required to specify the curvature of a hip bone socket? How many nucleotides are required to specify the position of nerves and blood vessels in a hip bone socket? So the amount of information is going to be more. The third point, it will be much more difficult to decipher more complex patterns in the nucleotides that specify structures used only once in an organism. What do I mean by that? I mean by that that um, <clears throat> these proteins are built over and over again in cells. It's it's an ongoing, constant process. The things like building a hip hip bone socket is are done once when uh, an organism that happens to have hip bones is developed. So we would have to catch it at that moment, and how's that information being used? Because we're deciphering a language. We have to see what are those nucleotides. How is it that a bunch of nucleotides determine all these things? So going back then, um, it will be much more difficult to decipher more complex patterns in the nucleotides that specify structures used only once in the organism. Uh, going on, though, those from those conclusions or things we learned from this DNA language, perhaps some of the most important things we can say about that, is let me also underline the abstract nature of the relationship between DNA and the amino acids. Abstract. There are no amino acids in DNA, nor are there any peptide chains or proteins in DNA. There are 20 types of amino acids and only four types of nucleotides. Information in DNA is in the form of an abstract language. As shown, the sequence of nucleotides determines the structure of organisms. So any change or evolution in the structures of organisms has to occur in the abstract language or code. Since these changes are made in the abstract language and not in the cells or structures themselves, we correctly describe these changes as random. We correctly describe these changes as random. Why? 
Random because these changes bear no logical relationship to the information. We're going to cover that in a future video, but it's already obvious that any change to nucleotides do not have a logical relationship to the information because it's in an abstract form. Random because these changes bring no information with them to the DNA. We can see that the DNA is has a lot of information in it about structures and this 2% structures of um, polypeptide chain structures of proteins by that through that so there's a bunch of information there how to build um, polypeptide chains how to build proteins the changes in nucleotides do not bring new information with them bring no do not bring any information with them to the DNA random and we would call these changes random as these changes bear no logical relationship to the structures described in the information. So that's another reason to call them random. So what is it or what changes the information in DNA? And we're going to look at that in our next video. What changes the information in DNA? We hope these videos are useful to you and get you thinking very seriously and concretely about the DNA problem. We have a web page, www.thednaproblem. Uh, if you wish to reach us via um, email, you can email us at thednaproblem at gmail. And we look forward to seeing you in our next video.